Hello, people of the internet. My name is Johnny, and welcome back to yet another news video. Today's video is all about the Fazbear Fright books, because for the past couple of days, we've had a lot of brand new info released about the books. We got all the chapter titles for book number eight, Gumdrop Angel. We also got a preview of book number eight. I have a summary to read out for you guys. And then, of course, the headlining news story for today, the cover artwork for book number 10, Friendly Face. So let's not waste any more time. Let's hop into it. If you're brand new to the channel, make sure you subscribe. Even if you are subscribed, scroll down, double check, make sure you are still subscribed. Sometimes YouTube will unsubscribe you. It's really stupid, but it also takes five seconds to double check. And let's get right to the point. The reason you clicked on this video, it's in the thumbnail, it's in the title, the cover artwork for book number 10, Friendly Face. This is it. And my goodness, what, 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 what is this? So it appears to be a black cat uh, with the, uh, with a face of a human. Whether that's a mask or an actual face, I don't know. Based upon the eyes, I'm guessing it is an actual face. And based off of the name of the book, Friendly Face, I, I have a, a, a strong suspicion that that is a real human face on that cat. Scott, what are you doing to this franchise? To give my honest opinion about this cover artwork, it hasn't fully, you know, stuck with me just yet. I, I find it very strange looking. Um, but at the same time, I, I do find it extremely terrifying. I mean, just look at those eyes. Dude, those eyes are insane. Yeah, a lot of people are saying that it looks like the mask of the puppet from FNAF 2. I can kind of see that, but at the same time, it's also a, you know, a white face. I don't know if it's going to be about the puppet mask. We have seen the mask of the puppet in previous, um, entries in the book series, so... I don't know, maybe? But let me quickly read to you the summary for Friendly Face. FNAF fans won't want to miss this pulse-pounding collection of three novella-length tales that will keep even the bravest FNAF player up at night. Act in haste, repent at leisure. After losing his friend in a terrible accident, Andrew can't spend his money fast enough on a happy companion guaranteed to keep his friend's memory alive. Mott quickly flushes his brother's creepy new pets, but the creatures have other plans. Eager to put her classmates in their place, homecoming queen Jessica doesn't stop to double check her homework. Reprogramming a defunct animatronic in the 10th volume, FNAF creator Scott Cawthon spins three sinister novella-length stories from different corners of his series' canon, featuring cover art from fan-favorite artist Lady Fizzy. Readers, beware! This collection collection of terrifying tales is enough to unsettle even the most hardened FNAF fans. Yeah, I mean, we're 10 books in, you know how this works. This cover of Friendly Face, the one with the cat and what appears to be an actual human face, will be about Andrew and trying to keep his friend's memory alive. So my guess is, that face that we see is his friend. And he took his face and put it onto the cat. I don't know. It's it's, Scott's weird. I do think it's a little weird because the story about uh, Mott quickly flushes his brother's creepy new pet, uh, but they have other plans. That could also be the story, but again, the the cover is always the story, always the first uh, story in the book. But again, creepy pets, I mean, it's a cat with a human face, but again, this will be about Andrew unless there's some changes that we don't know about. It's also worth noting that the book is now 272 pages exactly instead of the 224 uh, that it was originally. So now this has the exact same book uh, pages length as book number two and number three. I don't know if this is true, uh, but apparently 224 is the placeholder page number for the books. Again, I don't know if that's true. That's what I've heard. But that is now the official length of book number 10 and also the description and also the cover. God, it's so terrifying. Moving on now to book number eight, Gumdrop Angel. We got a lot of info on this book. First up, we have the official story titles, the chapters in the book. In fact, some people have actually already gotten the book. Number one is Gumdrop Angel, of course. Number two, Sergio's Lucky Day. And number three is What We Found. Now, I'm not gonna have any spoilers, but apparently this book is insane. And thanks to Google Books, we have the most common terms and phrases from book number eight. As you can see, there's a lot of notable names like Hudson, Sergio, Barry, Angel, of course. I do see Dale and Jake, two characters that we do know are already in the Fazbear universe of the FNAF franchise. Dale being the, I believe he was the CEO of the VR game in Help Wanted. I'm not saying he's in the book story because I, again, I haven't read it. But yeah, we also got Jake, we have Faith, Claire, a lot of people, Violet as well. 
Uh, and of course we have Freddy's and Granny, which is capitalized. Lewis as well, so it looks like uh, Scott took inspiration from MatPat with the whatever story the Springtrap baby was from, and now he's looking towards Lewis to uh, make a story about. Good old Darko's games. But yeah, that is all of the common terms and phrases. Kind of interesting. And finally, we also got a extended digital preview of book number eight, Gumdrop Angel. Now it is quite long, uh, and I'm also not allowed to share it directly with you guys. So it's linked down below, or I also have a summary for you guys that I'll read right now. Thanks to Good Morning on the FNAF uh, subreddit for the summary. The preview starts off with Angel in a box. Her eyes feel hard and her body is weak. This seems to be similar to Step Closer. Angel and her family are visiting Freddy Fazbear's Pizza as part of a party for Angel's little sister, Ophelia. Bianca, who is Angel's mom, has recently married a man named Myron, who can not only afford the party, but afford tons of horse-themed decorations along with toy horses for each kid at the party. Dude, that sounds like a banger party. Some filler happens with Angel developing a crush on a man named Dominic and giving uh, her his number. After getting back to her table, Angel watches the performance and Ophelia blowing out the candles in her cake along with the animatronics. Angel suspects the animatronics have air blowers built in, kind of sus. After the kids finish the cake, a giant gummy statue known as the birthday gummy is lowered from the ceiling and is seemingly alive. This is my first time reading this, so I don't know what the hell is going on. The gummy must have its toe eaten first, and the children will then walk up to the head. The head has a gumdrop nose, which only the birthday child may eat. Ophelia decides to take the gumdrop nose home. Angel and her family visit a horse stable so that Ophelia may get a horse and a pony. Some filler happens with Angel talking to a girl named Tammy. At at home, Ophelia puts the gumdrop nose in a treasure bowl made out of real crystal. Angel gets a call from Dominic and talks to him before her dad finds out, causing her to have to hang up. The preview ends with Angel arguing with her dad as she wanted student loans for acting school, only to be rejected because Myron can afford it even though he refuses to give Angel the money. Alright, so I think we can all definitely say that Angel is going to be the one to eat the gumdrop nose and turn into the gumdrop angel. Angel. I'm pretty sure we all suspected that when we got the the name of the book and also the description because you know Gumdrop Angel the name lines up with the name of the the main character in book in the first story You know so it just makes sense that she'll get mad, you know, she'll be jealous I'm pretty sure that's even the description of the book, right? She gets jealous. She eats the nose and then Chaos ensues and yeah, that is all the news we have today on the Fazbear Frights book franchise It's coming to an end uh, this year, which is so sad. I know a lot of people, including myself, really enjoy these books, but, um, you know, 12 is way too much, so I'm glad Scott is finally, you know, putting the, uh, the series to an end at number 12. But yeah, that's it. If you made it to the end, make sure you're subbed, you've hit the like button, and I'll catch you all on the flip side. Goodbye.